Right, hello and welcome to Discover Dorico for March. Well, I guess unless you're in Tokyo or somewhere after that, because it's now April. But anyway, this is the March session for Discover Dorico. Um, so spring has sprung, and although I'm not yet covered in bees, type your sandals like a Roman soldier. Let's get started. Um, I'll be looking at the chat over here, so uh, let me know as long as you can hear me. We should all be okay. Hopefully there's a delay, of course. So I will be reading the chat, but bear with the delay. Um, there's a good time for me to say don't forget the resources area, so www.dorico.com forward slash resources. Um, there's all sorts of useful links to installers um, and all sorts of things on there. Um, if you're just getting started with Dorico, then there's a getting started guide you can use as well. Um, today uh, it's the end of March 2021, so I'm using Dorico 3.5.12. And uh, I'm using a Mac version, also available on PC, of course. So if you don't have the latest version, you can get a link from the resources section. Today, we're going to be looking at how condensing works. So from the defaults all the way, you know, the, the automatic layout options and that kind of thing, all the way through to the manual choices. Um, condensing is designed as a turn it on option. Uh, up here in the edit menu, and we've uh, we've had a look at this before, you can just uh, turn on condensing. If you want a shortcut for it, you can set your own. That was just my uh, shortcut that I have for today. Um, but con condensing is designed just as a turn it on option. Great for your compositions or for teachers needing to reduce the number of staves on a score automatically. Um, but you might also want to control things you know how things are condensed yourself so if you're copying something from uh, IMSLP or something like that then we'll also look at those options and, and how you can control what's condensed and when. Um, so are we all okay on the audio side and everything else? I can see some people in the chat so we've got oh yeah Canada, Italy, Florida, Somerset, Slovenia, Netherlands Hopefully you can all hear me okay. I'll try and keep an eye on that chat over there as well. So um, any issues, let me know. So let's get started. So condensing. Um, so by default, uh, condensed notes are grey, by the way. So that's what these grey notes are here on the score. If you don't want them to show grey in the view menu up here, then for note and rest colours, you can just turn off the condensed music option. They'll go black, but it is useful to show them as grey because then it reminds you that you can't click on them because you can't edit condensed music. So if I try and click on these and edit them, I can't do this. I have to turn the condensing off or be in, be in a different layout to do that. Um, you'd also so you've got these black notes up here, of course, that you can click on and select, um, but the other ones, therefore, you can't. So. When you, one of the annoying things actually you might find when you first turn on condensing is that if you've got a lot of condensed stays here and you're trying to click on them because you want to play from, for example, the beginning of this bar, then you can't because when you click on it, you can't select that note to say play from here. So I would suggest click on something, for example, like a bar line because you can select that or one of the black notes because if I click on the bar line here and press P for play, then I can, I can play from that point in the score. Of course you can do that from uncondensed staves, you just can't do it from condensed staves. Uh, and even the dynamics and things, because they're also condensed, you can't click on those even though they're not actually grey. Um, so it was just a, I guess, you know, if you find a system object or a bar line, then click on a bar line, you can play from there. That should help you out, hopefully. Um, and of course, condensed uh, options, I start with, and a lot of people I think have maybe missed this and jumped to some of the other options first, uh, you start with layout options really. So the shortcut, the default shortcut is uh, Command Shift L, um, or if you're on a PC it's uh, Control Shift L. Uh, and in, then you're in the layout options section, so for the layout you've selected, so the full score in my case here, uh, if you go to condensing, it's in the players section, condensing, then you get this section here, which will tell you if you've turned condensing on or off, which is the option in the edit menu. But also there's some options here for what you can condense. Um, so, for example, by default, I think you'll find that Divisi and adjacent players are not condensing. So if I just scroll down here, you can see the violin one here, they're Divisi at this point and so is violin too. And you can either condense Divisi, or if possible, condense Divisi and adjacent players. So when you press apply, then Dorico underneath under here, let me just move it out of the way actually, um, then it will condense the, the violins and they've now gone grey as well. So it's still labelling that, that it, they're Divisi at this point, but um, it's condensed them for you. Um, <clears throat> and if you want that for other players but not strings, then you can use this, this option here to just um, exclude the adjacent violin section players from condensing. 
So that's one of the options for layout options, but also there's this bit here that I think some people maybe miss, which is the custom condensing groups. So by default in this piece, um, this is Durico's doing all of the condensing automatically. So here we've got four horns condensed all down to one staff. So it's it will, by default it will condense things as much as possible. But you might not always want that, especially if you're copying another uh, another edition. So in the custom condensing group section, if you press plus here, then oh, it's open on a second monitor. Then you can choose, for example, if you want to choose specifically that horns one and two should condense, or if you want to choose specifically that horns one and three should condense, uh, and then maybe you want two and four to condense. You can so you can choose the options in here. Um, let's just select those. I'm holding down, as you can see, I'm holding down Command to select both of those. So when I apply that now, Dorico will redo the condensing in this score, and I can close that window for a second, and now I'll always get horns 1 and 3 and 2 and 4, so it's kind of that's the, the limit of, of what you've set. So that can be a very useful option from the beginning, just to say, actually, you know, this is the default, the start position, is to condense the instruments in that way. Um, and you, you don't necessarily need to instantly jump into the manual condensing options that we, we will also look at in this section. But I just want to say, you know, start with the layout options. The other useful uh, option is that the layout options are set per layout. So you can have a two scores if you want, a condensed score and an uncondensed score, uh, and then set different options depending on what you want because they're set per layout. So let's have a look at some of those options as well. Um, Apart from some people saying hi, and thank you for checking the sound, Frank, uh, I think we're all good. Yeah, so let uh, carry on. So what I'm going to do now is um, start a new project. By the way, if you wanted to have a look at this project, this is the uh, the Dorico Prelude um, by Sagan Akinola. So this is one of the example projects that you get with Dorico. So if you want to have a play with this one, then, then you can do. Um, so I'm just going to go to File New, Start a New Project, and let's have a look at some kind of condensing options right from the, the very beginning, from the basics, and see what's going on. So here's a blank project. Um, now you can you can do um, add ensemble, I'm going to add some solo players. Um, as we've seen in the previous one, normally section players don't condense, but you can turn those on if you want to. So I'm just going to use solo players because I'm going to use, uh, let's, we'll use four individual horns. So I'll click plus, I'm going to type horn, press enter, uh, and that gives me the first horn. Um, now you could Actually, there's a couple of other ways you, you could do this. Um, you could, down here in the bottom left corner, let me just, there we go, in the bottom left corner, you could have used this option for uh, ensembles typed horn and chosen four horns that way. Um, but why I often end up doing, especially as I'm, I'm doing things, instead of doing it this way and saying, uh, you know, add, an, add one horn, add another horn, and that kind of thing, um, what I do is add one, have it selected, and I've set a shortcut just to, to duplicate the player. So I can add four horns that way. So then you can use it for any combination of instruments. As long as you've created one of them, you can easily create an, another one just by duplicating the player. So a quick option to do that. Um, so uh, let me just move my screens around. There we go. So uh, let's just... Uh, start with this one and say we'll put some time in, let's say we're in common time, um, and let's just put in a chord here. So I'm just going to press shift, down arrow, um, let's just enter a chord. In fact, let's do this in, we'll do it in transposed pitch, um, then that should make sense. So we'll just put a chord in here. If you're the kind of person who likes to add bar, uh, bars rest to see where you're going, shift B, type a number, add, uh, add some bars rest. So now we've got these notes in here. Um, so one of the, op let's just so you can see what's going on, I'm going to press this little plus up here in the top corner. I'm going to open another full score. So I've got two full scores. I'm going to right click on this one and do a vertical split. So now I've got one full score over here and I've got one here and they're, they're duplicates of each other. But now what it means is if I wanted to, you can, on one of the ones here, if I um, turn on condensing, um, um, but put the other one into galley view, then you can see the notes here and you can see the condensed result here. So this is the same full score open twice, um, but you can, you can see two different layouts, this one in galley view uh, and this one in page view. Uh, and no no comments yet? Good. I must be doing well then. Um, so let's just have a look at what happens as you start to change things and move things around over here, and we can see the condensed result on the right-hand side. So by default, it's condensed this entire chord down to one staff. 
If I move one of these notes, so I'm going to select this note and press Alt and the right arrow, then you'll see that Dorico is splitting them now. So it's saying here's one and here's two, three, four, and the staff labels are also doing the same now. Uh, so if I move another note, for example, to the right, so Alt, right arrow, and you can see it's splitting these. So I've now got one and three and two and four, so it's doing the labeling for us. So if you want to kind of, you know, as, as you continue to split things up, you'll see Dorico will make a good stab at, depending on where things end up, um, maybe that one's not quite so neat, it will make a good stab at putting these together in the smallest condensed option that, that it could possibly can. Um, and if you do this kind of thing and, you know, and, and you're dividing things up, then this is where you might decide, you know what, actually I want to, you know, I want to decide what's going on here um, with the horns. If I just put these back for a second, so we've got a, a simpler option, um, there's a few other things that will potentially affect what's going on. So what Dorico is doing is it's looking for condensed regions. So if I add some more notes over here, so let's just say um, we'll just add some notes in here, then you can see now Dorico is saying we're going to do one and one with two and four here, and here's one, but then one is going to carry on here and three isn't, so we're going to split them a different way. Um, and uh, Shrish, I think I've just answered your message on Facebook as well. When you're trying to condense cello and double bass sections, um, you're probably going to end up with an octave transposition. But I said, drop me an email uh, if you want, if you've got a specific case, and we'll we'll look at that one. Um, so with, with this one here, it's now di uh, doing the splits a different way. And if I extend this note slightly, so I'm going to press Alt Shift to the right, um, then this actually makes one condensed region because Dorico is looking for rests. So if I uh, remove that again, then this is actually two condensed regions. So Dorico has the option of doing this, these few notes, and this bit differently if it wants to. They're, they're uh, two individual condensed regions. Um, so let's. Uh, take some of these notes and also copy them down to the, the staff below. So now you can see Dorico is now saying 1.2 are 2 because they're both playing the same thing and if I was to move these notes let's say down then you'll see it will start to make chords and it's decided it can uh, it, it can do those differently. So these are actually now you can see this note here starts off on its own and one and three are stems together and then Dorico's put the stems for one and two together and that's because there's a rest in the middle. So if I extend this note like this, so I've extended this note just using um, Alt Shift and the right arrow, extend it along the rhythm grid which I think I'm just in the way of but it's down here in the left hand corner. Um, and now I've extended this, this is now all one condensed region. So this, just with a very slight adjustment, now gives me a very different condensed option here, because this note here is then, the, the notes are then going to be a, a second stem underneath, because that's one condensed region. So it's split these stems because, the, because of what the top voice is doing. And also now Dorico's decided that it should do one and two and three and four and split them differently. So Basically, the, to start off with, when you're looking at how is Dorico going to be condensing this and what's it doing, it's looking for rests. And each rest denotes the end of a, a condensed region or a region it can condense. So this rest will, will do that, and so will this one over here. And if I, again, make this shorter again, that's, you know, that's not a terribly nice um, tie in there. Um, then what Dorico is doing is saying, well, look, here is a rest, so I can I can optionally now condense that in a different way, so now I've got the stems together again and I've, you know, thorn three is back up here instead of down at the bottom. So rests are the first thing that's important for how is Dorico condensing. So if you've ever got a question, and for example we put it on the forum or on Facebook and say, you know, what's going on here? Um, we often need to see more information either side to see where is that region, what else is going on. It's not just that instrument that's important, it's the other instruments that Dorico might be condensing. It depends whether you have set in here a, a, con a custom condensing group, because if you've set something custom here, then Dorico isn't necessarily going to do this, uh, where it's going kind to of manually grouping things and trying to make the smallest number of options possible. But basically what we need to know is you know where are the rests, because that will, but to start off with, denote what's going on. Um, another option that will uh, tell Dorico what's going on, so if I just put these notes back for a second. So now we've got uh, these notes here, and it, when you start to add dynamics, so I'm going to press Shift D and just put a, a mezzo forte here. So now I've got a mezzo forte here, Dorico's put this one at the top. Now if I put this one down the bottom down here, so we've got one in horn 2 as well, and horn 3, see now 
just adding this this um, dynamic in here, Dorico said, well, I can now have horns one and three all with the same dynamic, and horn four doesn't have a dynamic, so that's why it's separate. So if you were just looking at this right-hand side and saying, well, why isn't horn four condensing with you know with these? We've got a rest, so that's, that should all be okay. Why not? It's because it doesn't have all of the, the same dynamics, which are also important. So as soon as I take this dynamic and put it alongside it as well, then... You, uh, you'll get the same condensed option, you'll get the, them all as one chord. So the dynamics could also be important as to... So things basically need to be exactly the same. So much so that if I take this mezzo forte, for example, in horn two, and I press alt right arrow, and it'll move them all on uh, to, the, to the next one. So they're all grouped, they're, you know, well, they're all linked, sorry. If you're confused ever about grouping and linking, linking is a big letter L. It's a big L, they're going up and down. So it's linking all of these instruments. Um, now I'm just gonna delete that dynamic for a second. So if I was to put this one in and alt click slightly to the right, you see that it's slightly out of alignment. This is actually not attached at the beginning now. It's attached a, probably a quaver, an eighth note into the bar. And look what's happened to the, the condensed option here. Dorico knows that it's not attached in exactly the same position so therefore it said, well, here's one of the mezzo forte markings for horns one, three, and four, but horn two is different, and so it's added the mezzo forte marking underneath. So this is kind of the labeling here, in this case, is telling you also what's going on. This mezzo forte is different. So you need to have a look at the uncondensed one and maybe alt left, push that backwards. Even better though, and you, what you might find is this happens if you've imported something from Music XML from another program. If the dynamics weren't all exactly in alignment, they weren't all exactly on the same beat or part of a beat, then you might get this, and you might not be able to tell, because if in engraved mode, for example, you've moved the dynamic to the left slightly, then that you, know, you might not notice that actually it's out of alignment. So you need to look sometimes at where the attachment line is. So this little dotted orange line. See, this one is attached at the beginning of the note, and this bit is attached like slightly later on. A bit difficult to tell in this case because it's only a whole note, a semi-brief, but uh, that, that's what's actually going on. So you need to change that one. But even, even better, if possible, when you're entering things like, di uh, things like dynamics, Use the option in the edit menu for paste special for duplicate to staff below. I've added a shortcut for it because I use it a lot. So that's my shortcut. You, you know, it might not work for you. Um, I think there's also one on the Stream Deck, or you could use MetaGrid or whatever. But create yourself some way of quickly copying things directly to the staff below and potentially the staff above, uh, if that would also be useful. Because I can now take this dynamic and I can copy it to the staff below, and I know it's in exactly the same rhythmic position. So then it's going to give me less problems later on when I'm looking at the condensing. So it, again, it's just a case of making sure things are actually the same because it's, it's that kind of you know, accuracy, it's that important bit that makes Dorico say, yes, you, you know, they are the same, I, I can make these look the same. If you need the, you know, if, you, if this started slightly later into the bar, you know, and you needed the, the dynamic, oh, I've, they're all linked, you needed the dynamic not to be there, then, you know, you can do that, and of course Dorico will then condense it accordingly. But if, if you don't mean that, if you mean them all to be the same, actually make them the same. So make yourself a shortcut for this option, um, which is the duplicator staff below. So go into the Dorico preferences, um, just search for the word duplicate in the, the um, in the key commands, so in here, key commands, just search for duplicate, add yourself a shortcut for duplicate to staff below because it's, it is very useful. Uh, there's a couple of questions, let me just check. Oh, uh, Ella's just asked about the way dyna dynamics are treated. Um, well, uh, let me know, Ella, if that doesn't, you know, if I'm not on, on the right lines already, but uh, that's the, the kind of thing we're looking at. So the duplicate option, you know, sh should help you um, because. You know, that's the kind of thing that will make a difference. But of course, you know, if this note again was was slightly longer, then you're going to get potentially, you know, d uh, different options here with the, the the stems or anything else. So, another option that can make a difference, and I have a uh, little pre-made example here. Um, here's two bassoons. So when you've entered things like uh, slurs. If I was to condense this to start off with, then we'll, we'll get this, which is probably as you'd expect. So it says A2, uh, and uh, we can see the grey notes, and they're all condensed, uh, 1.2. Um, 
If you normally, if I select a slur and I either drag these little drag handles or my favourite is Alt Shift Left, same shortcut I was using for the notes earlier, then I can uh, knock that slur to the left. You know, it'll move both of them. Great. If I deleted one, probably let's say again, this was a music XML file um, and I've imported it. And so the slurs aren't linked. So that you can see they're separate. So now, you know, just a just one slight change in a slur when I do the condensing option here. Now you see I've got duplicate slurs. And you might look at the preferences option and say, Dorica, what's going on? You, you know, the, the option to, you know, to make sure the slurs also condense is turned on. What, you know, what, what's going on? This one here is correct. So why is this one here not correct? So the, the things to look for here are that there's a rest in the middle. This is a different condensed region. Excuse me. <coughs> this is a different condensed region. Dorico can apply one set of rules here. And then it's starting from here up to the next rest and applying a different option here um, you know because it's a new condensed region because there's a rest and then this slur because it's slightly short it's not reaching this note means that actually that slur needs to be shown individually if Dorico is doing that in this condensed region then it will do all of the slurs it will treat all of them the same so therefore this slur and this slur also appear whereas actually you, you, you didn't necessarily need any of those so just make sure again that the slurs also line up there you go and so now you only have one slur over each of those because the duplicate notes stems and slurs and everything else aren't, aren't needed um, so again it's the the importance of kind of if possible you know, set one of them up and use the duplicate to stuff below. And you can do that with slurs, you can do that with dynamics, you can do that um, uh, with notes if they're also copies of each other. And because if you alt-click things, like I said with the dynamics before, you might find that you alt-click in slightly the wrong place. Alt-clicking can be quick, but duplicate to stuff below um, is also very quick. Uh, and if you don't need it to duplicate to the stuff below, there's also a move to stuff below. So in the four horns example we had, which I think is this one, yep. Uh, you know, if you if you'd added something, let let's say uh, let's say uh, here. So let's say we've got another dynamic in here, and we've got another note in here, and you want this dynamic, but you don't. You want to you know you want it to be in exactly the same place on this note, but you don't want it on this one. Well, there's also move to stuff below, so you can duplicate to stuff below, and then you can move it down to the the other stuff. So you know, use those commands in. Uh, I, I would say especially where you, you might be looking at condensing or where you're looking and saying, why isn't this condensing properly? You know, it, is it in exactly the right place? That's where I'd use the duplicate and the move commands. Uh, so that's the first couple of things. Now, some of the options and other things that you, you know, you'll, you'll want to get into. So you might say, well, I want to, uh, to you know, um, when I'm playing with some of these options, I might want a condensed score and a non-condensed score. So you can do that. So if I go to, uh, you see, when I've been operating this one here, if I go to engrave mode, then they're both going to go to engrave mode and they're both condensed um, because this is the same layout, full score, but I was just showing this one in galley view. Um, if you wanted to show this one in page view, then it's going to go condensed because this layout is condensed. If you wanted to have uh, two scores in uh, one condensed, one not, both in, in page view, then you can just in the layout section here, if you just create a new full score, and just for clarity, I'm going to call this one the condensed version. I can change the order in my list here. So now if I say that this one, if I say is the condensed score, and this one doesn't need to be, so I can turn the condensing off. Now I've got in page view, a non-condensed score showing, and on this side I can turn the condensing on, and I've got a condensed score showing. So, and the, like we said, the, the, the useful options with the condensed version is that you're using less paper. So you can have an A3, uncondensed score and an A4 may be condensed score. Um, for the Americans in the room, A3 is big, A4 is smaller. Um, so you know, you, you've, you've got those options to say, you know, if you want to have, and you can have them open on different monitors or anything else, you can have a condensed version and an uncondensed version. Maybe you're working on the uncondensed version and you have a condensed version as well. Um, instead of using a, a shortcut to turn them on off, it, your, your choice. Um, now, the, the important thing here is that then when you're in layout options and you've got the condensing options, depending on what you choose here, of course, will show you where the condensing is on. 
what the con custom condensing groups are, if it's condensed, or possibly what you're excluding, and whether or not you're condensing divisi. So you could have different versions if you wanted to. So uh, another case here is if somebody said, I've started condensing things and I'm not sure it's quite going right. I don't want to mess up everything I've done, but I might want to kind of look at you know, some of these other options. We'll make a new layout. And then, you know, set some different options in a new layout or on a new paper size or, you know, with different margins. You can do that uh, with, with the, uh, the layouts. The next things that people will probably look at, I think, is when they say, well, you know, I've, I've got some options here where I want to set, for example, here, my horn labels aren't the same. So you say, well, I need to have a look at those. So let's presume they're in engraving options. So let's go to engraving options. And if you go to condensing, then you're a bit disappointed because in condensing here, it's a very short list of options, which is more to do with the distance of labels and whether or not the background is erased and what the separator looks like. Uh, oh, that's it. And the only player label option is player labels for unison passages. You can either have at or not. So where's the option then? Well, the option, of course, because what you're actually looking at here is the staff labels. So it's an engraving options, staff labels. So if you go down here to staff labels, then along with all of the other options for staff labels, um, you have some of these options here. So if you have, uh, let's say this one, if you've got numbers, player numbers for condensed players can either stack vertically or stack horizontally. They can either, when stacking them, um, for condensed players vertically, you can either consider the stem allocation. So this example here is showing you 1.2 is at the top stem and 3 is the lower stem, the, the stem down. Or you can say ignore stem allocation. So if you, I've seen a few cases where people have asked on Facebook or on the forum and said, why are my labels not, you know, why are they different? Because Dorico is condensing them differently. It's condensing this one with two stems in two directions, and it's condensing this one all on the same stem, 3.4. So Dorico is clearly showing you in the staff labels what the condensing is at the start of this system so that you can tell what's going on. If it changes during, for example here, it'll label it with the 3. So now it's 3 and 4. We've actually got two, effectively two voices, two stem directions going on here. Um, but this one at the beginning of the system, where the staff label is, that's what it's showing you. If you don't like that, if you want them to be consistent so that you've, you've got them the, the same as Horn 1 and 2, then use this. Ignore stem allocation, press apply, and Dorico will then make your labels consistent. So that might be an option you want. There's also some other options in here. So, uh, for example, I passed it earlier, this one here. If you want to um, group the staff labels, so if you want to do this, then you can have horn in F between the two stays and then one, two, three, four labeled that way. So again, this is all the, um, the, the staff labels options here in engraving options. But actually, for as far as condensing is concerned, that's probably, that's probably it for engraving options because the other options for condensing are either in the layout options we've looked at or they're in notation options. So notation options has a condensing section with even more options in it. Why is it in here? Well, partly because the condensing options that you're going to set in here could be different depending on the flow. If you've got a number of flows happening and they could have different instrumentation, you might want to choose some different options. So notation options are flow specific and that's where the con these condensing options are. So let's just expand this dialogue a little, have a look at some of these. So this one will allow you to do a number of things. For example, Dorico by default will allow single stem unison. So if you've got two instruments playing exactly the same thing, it won't do this and show you two stems. If you want that, then prevent single stem unison. But if you don't, then, then you want to allow that. Um, similarly, the mid phrase in unison, by default, Dorico here will allow a single note to be um, a, uh, to, to be a mid phrase unison. So it will be a, to have the same to share the same stem. If you don't want that, and so what, what do we mean by a phrase? A phrase is separated by rests. So the condensing region and, uh, and, and that phrase, you know, it's, we're looking again for the rests. And if there's uh, rests in there, Dorica will take that whole region. And then if in that region, there's there's one just one note it normally needs to be, then Dorico can label it Atu. If you're saying, well, hang on a minute, that, I've got too many Atus happening, I don't want that to happen, maybe you don't want to allow uh, the mid-phrase unisons. And this is where you could turn it off globally for the whole flow, if that's what you wanted. And we'll look at the other options uh, in a minute. Similarly with pitch crossing, 
So, uh, you know, th this is the global options for whether pitches are allowed to cross or not. So um, by default, uh, it will limit the pitch crossing and it will limit it to only one note. So here, there's just one note where they cross over. Um, and if you want to allow a few more than you can do, you can change this, or you can allow unlimited pitch crossing with this option here. Sometimes you might say, you know, why have I got two individual staves when I think they could condense? It could be this that's causing causing that to happen. Um, the uh, accidental options, yeah, amalgamation options. So again, the, the amalgamation options here is on allow amalgamation by default. Um, so depending on how many players you've got, um, it's, it's giving you one stem where possible for a lot of those instead of this option, which is giving you individual stems. So you can see because it needs a different stem up here, it's also here only giving you uh, one stem and putting all of the other notes on, uh, underneath if you're going to prevent those. Slurs can make an impact and, and how many slurs you've got. We've, we've looked a little bit at slur cases, but if you do have slurs that are exactly the same, do you want them to be amalgamated or not? Um, and the same similar for playing techniques and uh, if you have inactive players I saw a question where somebody said why am I getting lots of rests underneath that's because the default is to show rests and omit the labels underneath but if you want to you can uh, do the opposite which is to hide the rests and label the active player uh, if that's what you prefer. You can also hide the labels. If, if you then get too many labels in the properties panel at the bottom uh, you, you can hide those as well what to do uh, when hiding rests, and um, yeah, another option for condensing for players inactive for the whole system. So do you want them to be uh, you know, shown in the label here or, or not? So here you've, it says it's one, two, three, but actually it's only showing you one and three. It's hidden uh, here. It's just included in the staff label. And here it said it's not going to condense them at all. So this inactive player is going to get its own staff to show you nothing's going on at all. So what do you want to go on? Uh, what do you want to happen with those? Now, the reason to cover those in a bit more detail is that these all come into play when you want to do some other things as well. So here's a, another uh, example. It's more horns, sorry about that. So what do we have here is we have a full score here and we have a condensed score here. So you can see the uncondensed and the condensed version. Um, and we're going to have a look at this one and say, you know, so what are some of the options we could apply to this bit here to see, you know, what's actually going on and, you know, uh, uh, and what's, uh, what, what do we got and, and what other options can we do? So here you can see, we, um, this is, I'll just show you the layout options. There's nothing set in the layout options, I believe. Yep, there's no custom condensing group. So Dorico is aiming to give you a least number of staves possible. So why is horn four then not playing this chord? It's exactly the same note. Why is it not playing exactly the same as the other three horns? Because horn uh, four here uh, has a rest. So this is taking this individual section as its own condensing region, whereas all of the other players up here, and you can see them over here, it's only horn four that has a rest. All of the others don't. So therefore, that's all one long condensing region, which actually goes all the way through to the, the end of this little uh, section here. Whereas this is two, two sections. So horn four, by default, has got its own little region here. Um, also, we've got these double notes in here, so let's have a look at some of these options. So you could say, well, actually, I would like the custom condensing groups, and I would like to do horn one and three, and horns two and four. So now I'm, it's going to, this is kind of the minimum it's going to do. Now, it won't collapse onto one staff at all. It won't group them in any other way. It'll only do one and three and two and four. So now I've got this, okay? So I've got one and three and two and four. You can check if you want to your staff labels. So. In engraving options, oops, uh, yeah, well, it wasn't staff labels. You can check and say, no, we're, we're considering the stem allocation. We could use ignore later if we want to, but at the moment it's showing us with the, the, the stem allocation what's going on here. Okay. Um, but I'm still getting these double notes. Why am I getting double notes here? And that's because Dorico is taking all of horns one and three. We said they go all the way through. It's all one long region all the way up to the end. And especially because horn three has these rhythms here and horn one uh, has some extra notes here. So they've got different rhythms. In that condensing region, Dorico's decided it needs to show you both horns individually because in that whole region, that condensing region, that's what needs to happen you know, for, for the whole region. It's applying one rule to the whole region. So what happens if you want to split it? Well, that's where you might want to use a manual condensing option. So if you go into engraved mode, 
and select a note where you want to want this to start. So let's say, uh, let's, say let's say from here, for example, you can go to engrave mode and engrave menu, and then go to condensing change. Now in here, you can say it, it will list the options that uh, the the instruments who are um, who are condensing. So here we've got horns one and three that we set up, and horns two and four. And if you want to make any changes in here, you put a little tick in the box to say I want to make changes to this. Um, the, these horns, and then you can choose what they are. Now these options here are exactly the same as the options in notation options, it's just they don't have the pictures, the pretty pictures to tell you what's going on, because the idea is that you've already set those in notation options, and this is kind of the override to all of these. So this is saying, you know, actually do you want to for, I don't know, for slurs, when you toggle this on, do you want to change these options and allow them whereas maybe you were previously preventing them in some way or do you want to reset them so if you've made a change previously and now you want to reset um, back back to the notation options you can do a reset if you want to so this is where you can make changes there's also a manual condensing section at the bottom that we'll come on to so for this horn one and uh, three here actually all I'm going to do is not set any of these I've ticked the box but I've not set any options, and I'm just going to press OK. And the difference now is that Dorico says, OK, I've got a condensing region here, and then at this point, because you've added, I've added, a condensing change, Dorico now knows it's allowed to start a new set of rules from here, and it's allowed to re-look at the music from here all the way to the end and decide what it can do with the condensing, which means this note, this chord here, can now be taken as its own condensing region, so therefore it can just label it Atu and remove the duplicate. So if you want to do the same for the, the horns 2 and 4 down here, double click on your little condensing change flag that you've now got, or just press enter when, you, when it's selected, and I could do the same for horns 2 and 4, I could just tick the box, so now it's saying okay well I can look at these notes and then I can give you this for, um, for horns 2 and 4. So that's how you can, if you need to, just set up and say to Dorico, I know I've got this long phrase and I haven't added any rests and that's fine, but could you consider this bit individually and then this bit for condensing and using the automatic rules, I don't need to change anything, I don't need to set any new rules, but you can set a condensing change point here, so now this is the start of a new region that you can uh, now decide what's going on. So, you know, you can, you can make similar changes, so for example down here, if you then decided actually you wanted the, the condensing to be different here, um, because actually you know, they're all playing the same again, you could set a different option here and you could say, you know, I want to uh, go to condensing change and choose another option. This is why you might want to reset option because you've already set one uh, option potentially and you might want to reset it. But now I can just say, I just want to set a new condensing region. So actually I've now got three regions, one at the beginning, one here, and then one from here to the end. So now Dorico is saying, unlike these horns, I don't need to show both sets of the articulations. I can use a single stem because I can condense those differently. So that's how you can, if you want to, easily set up um, exactly what you want, but you don't need to actually apply any of those options. You just need to say, start a new condensing change option here. Um, and if you use this menu a lot, this uh, condensed change, again, set yourself a shortcut for it so that you can access that menu really quickly without having to go into the, the menu itself. So now you can see, of course, we've got the labels that are changing because I'm setting different condensing options in different places. So maybe you do want to use the option here in staff labels and say, uh, and I, I, I'm not worried about the stem allocations, I just want to, them to look the same. So you can do that if you want to. You could do the same for horns two and four. Now also in these condensing change uh, options, so whichever one you choose, press enter or double click on it, you can get back to this dialogue. So and as I said, this is where you can say, I do want to allow whole phrase unisons, or I want to have unlimited pitch crossing just for this small section, just for this small region, then you could do that if you wanted to. You can also use this manual condensing option at the bottom. So if you turn this on, you can then specify what's going on um, with the condensing, and you can just pick up one of the horns here and drag them into the right-hand side box. Dorico assigns a staff, and then an up, an up stem voice, adds the horn to it, and then has a down stem voice with nothing on it. So now you can say horns one and three want to both be on the up stem voice, and you press OK, then Dorico makes a bit of a mess here, because it says, well, if they're both in the same voice, then, you know, I'll do it if you want, but I, I wouldn't start muttering at you. Uh, so if I move this one down to the downstem voice, that's what we we had before. 
Um, so if you actually had, let's remove these, let's go right back to the beginning when we first started this. Uh, I know what some people uh, will have done is if you remove these custom condensing groups, then as we know, Dorico will try and get down to the smallest number of staves possible here. And I know what a lot of people have then started to do is say, right, from the beginning here, I would like a condensing change. And I now have all four horns listed here. And I have the manual condensing option. So now you can specify if you want to who's sharing and who isn't at this point. So you can say, you know, up stem voice one and two, down stem voice, oops, missed, down stem voice three and four. Um, you can also specify down here, um, you have some options to say that if, let's just put, put some of these back for a minute, you can add an extra staff if you want to. So now I've got staff one with an up stem voice for horn one and two, and I could make it a down stem voice just by dragging it, and I've got staff two, and I can say horn three. So actually, you could set this up and say, you know, I want horns at this particular point, I just want I don't know, one and four and two and three above. You know, you can make any completely custom options you want to. So now I've got one and four and two and three. Now that only works, like I said, because in layout options, I haven't initially set any custom condensing groups. So therefore, in these manual condensing changes, Dorico will now give you all four options and all four players that you can choose how you want to do the manual condensing. I wouldn't normally start there at the beginning of the piece because you've probably got something you want to set in layout options that says normally, by default, this is how I want the horns. The first four here and the second four on this stuff, for example. And this is normally only for kind of smaller sections during the piece when you want to set specific, specific condensing options uh, during the piece. Um, but you know that that should you know that then gives you all of the options. So you don't necessarily, when you when you tick this box, you don't necessarily need to set any of these notation options. It will start a new condensing region anyway, and therefore kind of start the, the default rules again and say here's a new region. But you can choose these if you want to, and you also have the option as well or instead of of choosing the condensing approach and whether you want any condensing to happen. So you can say no condensing, a manual condensing or a reset, which again will reset back to the defaults that you've set in the layout options um, uh, for you know how these are going to be grouped so that you've got you know options as you go through the piece. So I'm just going to have a quick look now at the comments because there's been a few, bear with me a second, if there's anything I've missed. Um, there's a question about clarinets for the labels. There is an option in the labels, again, for staff labels here for uh, the numbering of similar instruments if they have different transpositions. But I think because you've mentioned you've got an E-flat clarinet and a B-flat clarinet and they're actually potentially different players, then maybe you need to set those up as a, um, a custom group first. So you might want to go into layout options, set a custom condensing group first, because you can, you know, things like somebody asked earlier about cello and double bass, they're different instruments, so by default Dorico won't condense them, but you can press plus and you can condense them if you want to. Similarly with trombone and bass trombone, Dorico won't condense them by default because they're not the same instrument, but if you want to you can create a custom condensing group with both of those instruments in it, so um, that might help. Um, Suggestions for how to select players solo versus section. I mean, the the default my, my default really is that most players want to be solo players by normally in in the score. It's only normally the string players who are section players because then you get a different sound because a single violin staff in a score is actually a section of players. So therefore, it's a section instrument, and you get a different sound for those. And also, section players then have the option to be able to do divisi. Whereas when you have horns, you normally start with a solo horn because you've actually got four horn players and you want four horn parts in the end, so they're solo players, and those are the people who you might then want to condense on the score. Like I said, there is that option in layout options to say you can condense section players, um, but it, it, it's more common for the other players to condense and, and not for the strings to do that. Um, so yes, yeah, so I would normally start with um, solo players for, for most people, and section for the strings. Uh, have I missed anything else? 
the text size for the A2 on 1 and 2 is too small by default. I th is there... I can't remember now if there is already a font size um, that you can change for that by default, or was it something Daniel said we're aware of and we'll add? I'm sorry, I can't remember. Um, Georgos, if if there isn't one, email me. The email address for this is discoverdorico at steinberg.de. I do have a small backlog on that at the moment. I am going to get to all of the emails, don't worry. But yes, if you have any, any emails, then uh, any questions after this, just let me know if that's not the, the answer. Um, sometimes condensing hides accidentals or shows other accidentals. There are some options for what to do with accidentals. Um, if that isn't helping, so in the uh, notation options... Uh, especially uh, con concerning visibility overrides and, and propagating to condensed staves or not. Um, if that's not helping, then again, you can uh, send me an email if you have a specific case. There are some things that I think at the moment don't condense as nicely as they should. Um, I know that lyrics can, but n not always necessarily as nice as you want them to. So at the moment, I think there's potentially a bit of work we might need to do for some singer staves and for, for lyrics. Um, and in some cases, when you've got custom lines, playing techniques, that kind of thing, there could be uh, potentially some issues there. Also, if you're condensing where you've got solo players who hold more than one instrument. So if you have, for example, a uh, saxophone and clarinet player, or a flute and piccolo player, then only the first instrument that they hold is currently able to condense. We're, we're working on it, but you know, it, it's not available at the moment. So if you have, for example, I only have one horn here, but if you expand the player and you've got two players, and you can drag them and sort the order, but Dorico will only be able to condense at the moment the one that's at the top of that list, the, the first instrument they hold. Um, bear with me a second. Um, I, th I think Frank's uh, answered the question there about uh, swapping horns. Yeah, there, actually, it's a good point. When you're uh, writing for uh, instruments here, yeah, I just play the chord um, you know, when I put some of these in, or the, these are all unison notes anyway. Um, but in the previous example, it was just a chord. But if you need to, you can swap these players around here and it will resort the score order. So if you want to see one and three and two and four, or if when you're playing in the chords uh, and entering the notes, that's the way you round you want them, then you can do it this way and just you know temporarily move the horns into one and three and two and four. Dorico's still going to do the condensing based on the player, not the order they're in. Uh, and then you can resort the order here in setup mode later when you want to show one, two, three, and four again. So if that helps. Uh, you, uh, it's a question from Ella about um, thinking ahead with regard to string divisi for score or part layout. The idea is no, you shouldn't necessarily have to think ahead because you can just set a divisi point at one point uh, and then you can set a unison at another point and Dorico will worry about you know, where the staff, where the system changes, where the page changes uh, and that kind of thing. So you shouldn't need to. Um, you know, the, the idea is really that you can just write everything in galley view that, that you need and then you know worry about those things at the end. I suppose another point is that if you're using a very large score then condensing because of the amount of operation that's actually going on in the background working out which instruments need to condense, how they're going to condense, what all the regions are it can potentially slow the score down. If you want to have a look at some other examples by the way there's um, I don't have it open, uh, in fact I can show you uh, a couple of options that, that will help you here. So one is that if you want some information, Lily's written some excellent documentation on condensing and w what's going on. So if you prefer kind of a written manual version of this, um, the, the, this is ideal. So on steinberg.help, uh, and this is current for the 3.5, it says 3.3510. There's, there's no uh, changes in 3.5.12 for this anyway. Um, so, you know, what's going on for, with condensing and phrases and, uh, you know, various other options and, uh, you know, what's going what's going to happen and how there's also a condensing results section which is talking about you know the the unisons and what's going to happen and shared stems and shared staff and if things aren't condensed and um, you know condensing groups and uh, various things so uh, steinberg.help check out the uh, the excellent documentation that Livy's written there also if you want to kind of play around with some uh, examples if you go to scoringnotes.com or just google for scoring notes and right of spring 
Um, then there's a, there's a, a file here that um, th that's been made available. So Stephen Taylor from the University of Illinois um, has has put the whole of the Rite of Spring. Yes, really. Uh, it's, uh, there's two files, first part and second part, um, and there are you know in here he's got. Uh, you know, custom condensing change options that you can have a look at and see how some of these things are done. See what he's done with the labels, have a play with it. Um, you've then got a file that you can look at. It's also got some Divisi in here, you know, and you can then, you know, have a look at it. You know, would you have done it the, the same way? How potentially could you also choose to, you know, to, to divide if you have four oboes and three flutes or, you know, um, eight horns or anything else? So you can have a look at those with some information actually in there and kind of, you know, play with some of the options and see what's in there. So go to scoringnotes.com uh, and have a look at that. And in this, I can't remember if it goes through the, the process of what they've done. There's also, if you like a podcast, um, they did a podcast uh, section as well where you, he's talking about how he did it. Um, and I think it is at the top of the article, I think. Yes. So you can download the Dorico files, so you can then uh, have a play with those. doesn't matter if it's the demo of Dorico or the, the full version of Dorico. You can download those uh, and you can have a look at those examples and you can kind of play around with some of the condensing options there, as well as, I said, some of the our example files that are included with Dorico and have a look at those as well. Uh, let me just check some of the other uh, sections in here. You can't condense section horns with solo horns, but then I wouldn't normally create a section horn staff anyway. You can still have you know, a solo horn listed, who's a single player, and horns, let's say, one, two, and three underneath. They would also still be solo players, so as long as they're solo players with one head, that'll be fine. The only reason to have a section player would be if you're only writing, ever writing one staff and you want the sound of those three horns and you're going to write them all on one staff but then you'd only get one part with all three notes on it so I'm not sure you'd want that anyway I would probably stick to solo players even uh, yeah, these solo single head players label one of them solo if, if that's useful uh, oh Frank's already answered the at the Atu label size can be changed thanks Frank um, what if it's three part voices it uh, shouldn't matter, um, you know. Doric, as we've seen with some of the other bits, then then Dorico will add. Um, it will by default. It's trying to get to the smallest number of staves. If you can do that and still put three voices on there, it'll be fine. If not, maybe it'll break out to a, a, other staves. Um, and there are an increasing number of advantages for the pick to using Dorico with Cubase. Um, but partly because it's the same company, same sample library, same plugins, um, and there are things, as we said before, you can drag MIDI regions in from Cubase, which you can't do with Logic. Uh, you can't do with, as far as I know, you can't do with other doors, although I haven't installed them all. Um, and we're working more to do even more integration in in the future with Dorico and Cubase. So I think that's probably enough for today. You know, I've again, I've, I've sorry, I've waffled on for an hour, um, but I will put some time markers uh, underneath. So underneath this video, if it's not right now live, there will be some time markers um, so that you can jump to specific sections that, that you need so you can come back to this hopefully and use it as a reference for, for the future. Um, and you know, and uh, when you're having a look at condensing and you know, so why isn't it working? Well, check for where are the rests? because that's what Dorico is doing when it's con doing the condensing changes. Check for, are the dynamics actually the same? Are the slurs actually the same? Use the duplicate to staff below. You know, delete them from one staff and use the duplicate option because then you know that they're going to be the same uh, for both of them. Turn the condensing back on, see if that helps. Add a manual condensing change. Even if you don't actually change any of the options, just adding that manual condensing change means that Dorico is breaking up that region and it can then start the condensing afresh from that point on. Or set yourself some manual condensing options depending on what you need and you'll get better examples than this one. Let's delete that. Um, uh, and then you, know, you can decide exactly how you want the condensing to happen at that point. So... I'll answer some of the questions in the comments if they come up after this. Um, as always, you can find me on discoverdorico at steinberg.de. My name's John. Sorry if I didn't introduce myself. Um, you know, so if you've got any questions or anything else, um, we'll aim to do one of these sessions, as always, at the end of every month. So at the end of April, let's do another one. So what should the topic be next time? What are the burning questions that you have or things, examples that you'd like to be shown in Dorico? Please let me know. Uh, so, and I'll answer these comments for a minute and then, um, yeah, uh, anything after that, drop me an email. 
thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.